This week, we're talking about a new six-stroke engine out of Porsche and how Toyota plans to outdo their legendary 2JZ with a four-cylinder? What? <laughs> then we'll get the wildest-ass Land Rover we've ever seen and the rise of luxury trucks. But first, how Nissan and GM plan to take on our biggest nemesis. Welcome to the Big Three. If you have never tuned into the Big Three before, welcome. We talk about car news so you guys don't have to. Uh, if you like it, be sure to subscribe and tell your friends. That's how we grow. Join me this week, Felipe Armenta. What's up, guys? And Max Maddox. Hello. And I'm your host, Joe Weber. Uh, Nolan is out this week because he's at his honeymoon, having a great time. We uh, were yeah. all at Nolan's wedding last yeah, week. Yeah, Nolan's wedding this weekend, last weekend. Did you guys oh, cry? Yeah. I cried during his sister's speech. Same. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah me I mean, just... It hit me. It hit, I was not expecting it. Nolan's a very funny guy. You guys made us laugh a couple of times during the speech ceremony. And <laughs> <laughs> I was that. really nervous. Could you tell? Joe officiated no. the wedding. Yeah, yeah. true. My yes. first officiation. Yeah, you killed it. You no, did great. I could yeah. not tell you were. I was like, damn, he's, they're very comfortable. I guess all that practice in front of the audiences lately has helped them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was very sweet. It was a beautiful setting. Uh, Nolan and Chloe looked amazing. The food was really good. There was a mosh pit. Mm -hmm. so that was pit. Yeah. the most surprising part. I was like, I know they're going to play like Deftones because no one can't help himself. <laughs> but uh, it turned out there's like four songs in a row that yeah. people just got sweaty. And <laughs> Nolan went hard. I yeah. love that. Coolest wedding. For My sure. favorite part of the wedding was when Nolan was lifted up on the chair doing the hora and he signaled to Justin to help yeah. because he could tell everybody <laughs> was kind of like slipping a little bit and Justin came in and just saved the day and picked up the chair. Oh my God. Yeah, all his um, groomsmen, they I could tell they were getting tired because it was a long song. It was a beefy Nagila. chair mm -hmm. too. I'm like, you guys could have picked the lighter chair in my opinion. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so. But did you see, did you meet Dalton? Mm -mm. He had his shirt open. Oh yeah, I saw that guy. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Uh, I saw him after holding the chair for like <laughs> 10 minutes and he looked like he needed a break. Like he was pretty <laughs> gassed. Anyway, so Nolan will be joining us next week after his little honeymoon. Yeah. All right, let's get into it. 99% of the time when we see headlines about new nanny tech in cars, it's bad. But this time it's actually good. Mm. Maybe, maybe it's good. Nissan and GM have plans to tackle an annoying problem we all face Slow cars that camp in the left lane. Whoa. Uh, yeah. Tell me about it. Uh, it's a little battering ram that they attach to the front of the car. <laughs> it's one of those like out of the way. cow plows that they have on trains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so Nissan's new driver assistance package will suggest drivers move out of the left lane after passing a car on the left on a multi-lane highway. So this is for people who are not paying attention and think that it's all right to go 55 in the left lane. Mm. It's like, hey, get the F out of the way, dude. Dude, I mean, I, I, so this morning that thing happened. It happens every morning here yeah. in LA, I think. Um, so it's it, a passing lane, people. That's you get in the lane to pass, but and it's then you a move suggestion, over. right? So it's once you merge, so you go on the on the passing lane, yeah. and then you happen to stick around, so the car will suggest that you go back to your lane. Yeah, it's just another beep. I see. <laughs> that your car does, I guess, but. Uh, Are Nissan owners going to pay attention to this chime is the question. No, because they're listening to, I don't know, what do they listen to? Sexy Red. Sexy, Sexy Red. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> Little Baby. The drone of the VQ. Um, I guess that's cool. I don't know. I don't like my car telling me what to do personally. Yeah, but I think for pe for most of the population who just gets in their car and goes to work, I think... They need stuff like this. Like I have multiple people have told me they're like, oh, you like cars? I really like when my Subaru has the light on and tells me when there's someone so I can't go Merge. into the ne next mm -hmm. lane. Like people like this kind of stuff and maybe it'll help 10% of the people that don't pay attention. And, you know, they t a lot of people just take their driver's test and then don't think about rules of the road for the rest of their life. And then I, they turn 80 and then they're using the same driver's same training driver's they license. got when they were 16. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's a step in the, well, I guess you mentioned something, so multiple things, but I think it's a step in the right direction. You know, like I'm not a big fan of Teslas, but when I drive, the few that I've driven, I picked up on the fact that it tells you when the light turns green. I hadn't really paid attention. Oh. To and I've noticed people on their phone and as soon as the light turns green, they like, like something tells them because they all look up and then they start going. So oh, I'm like, okay, creepy. that's great. It's crazy that we need that in cars. Like you're driving this 
complex machine pay attention yeah um but also how easy it is i guess that's a another can of worms but i asked my girlfriend we we're driving and i was like hey did you ever go to driving school when you were young and she was like so she's from japan and she yeah. goes yeah but i had to pay two thousand dollars it's a whole i think it was a whole week and includes like her stay meals i was like wait what Whoa, and what? they go through like this whole like they really educate them and they i was you like go to camp it seems like a camp. That's crazy. I think school camp. Cool. Um, well, it was like that in Germany too. Like I mentioned on the Autobahn, everybody pays attention to the rules where you're only in the left if you're passing. Yeah. Like the amount of training you have to do to get a driver's license to be certified to drive yeah. there is like so higher than it is yep. here. And it's even more than Japan, if I remember. It's like 3000 or 4000 bucks in Germany. And I think that's just, I mean, that's a whole nother problem. Even when we were riding uh, the motorcycles in Vietnam with the boys, it yeah. was... The, our bikes were 125 cc's and everyone kept going oh man do you guys have the big bikes so i was like that's a big bike <laughs> i was like there? so i was like what do you mean and apparently it's you go through like these license stages where mm. at first you can only drive a scooter like a 50 yeah. cc thing and then you have to graduate and pay and learn more to get to the big boys and i'm like what i'm like here if you're 16 and you have enough cash you can go get a, a leader bike or a big yeah. bike and i'm like right the same driver's license that lets you drive a versa also lets you drive a hellcat which is nuts. exactly yeah. <laughs> exactly. crazy dude that's insane i mean like when you, <laughs> i was like how do we not but yeah um i think this is a step in the right direction i do think people are too distracted everyone's too busy on their phone especially like in big cities i think coming back to la if if you haven't been to la it's insane to see how many cars are on the freeway or on the roads it's yep. wild yeah. so and like at least half of them are on their phones. I would say, yeah. That's nuts, dude. Uh, I, I don't, it makes me scared when I think about it. If you don't, like at, when I was on parental leave for a long time, I didn't go on the highway forever. And then the first time I had to go to the office, I was like, this is terrifying. <laughs> it's shocking. But then if you do it every day, you're just like whipping through like, yeah. it, like nothing. It's really crazy how desensitized you get to just piloting a, a basically a tank. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's surrounded crazy. by hundreds of other tanks. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, going back ass. to people being on their phones, I saw a video of a vintage like 1948 Jaguar XK120, like fully beautifully restored. Uh, and this woman was on her phone coming the other way, and she just ripped the front of the, oh, the car, this Jaguar off. No, the guys were like out in like period correct <laughs> like <laughs> mechanics clothes and like don't go on your phone <laughs> <laughs> so anyways other systems like gm super cruise will actually overtake cars while on autopilot and then move back out of the left lane that's scary dude imagine your car doing that without you knowing yeah oh you're overtaking that is like i have uh assisted cruise control on my audi and when a car moves out of the way and I forget that I have it like set to 80, it'll just, just be like, <laughs> and then like <laughs> slam on the brakes. <laughs> it is a very aggressive system. Okay. And I trust it because I don't know, it's got a million sensors and it knows the brakes better than I do, but it's still jarring when you're like, oh shit. Yeah. There's computers. There's, there's a, I was in a buddy's Tesla and you know, the whole time we're talking, I never realized the car was driving by itself the whole time. I think halfway through on the freeway, he's like, yeah. motion. He's like doing all these <laughs> motions, and I freak out. And he's like, "Dude, it's fine. It's been." I'm like, "What?" So it's taking exits and doing all this stuff. Prior to me knowing, I was perfectly fine. Right. Yeah. Once I know that a machine is in control and yeah. not the driver, I freak out. Have you uh, driven a self-driving car before? No. I drove one. I drove a Tesla once yeah. uh, a couple of months ago. And what's interesting is you sort of think that the car's driving itself, you can relax a little bit, but I find that's more stressful because now you're watching everything that the car's doing to make sure that yeah. it's not messing up. And like, you know, if you're approaching a stoplight, you're like more aware of how it's braking and you're more aware of the cars around you. So I think it's kind of more of an inconvenience than anything else. It kind of is because if, when I was first starting to learn how to use my system, I'd still just like keep my like, foot a centimeter off the brake just in case because I didn't really trust it that much. And that's... And then you're mentally like spending more calories just worrying about <laughs> yeah, stuff. Dude. And you're still responsible no yeah. matter what anyway. That's yeah. a thing. You can't be like, oh, the car, you know, if you go to court or something. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can. Could you go to, like, could you just blame it on the car? And is could they like. They've had cases about this. And uh, I believe it defaults to the drivers being liable. Really? That's, that's what that's what the language is. That's why they, that's why Tesla calls it. Uh, FSD, which is what is that? Full self, full self drive. Yeah, they can't call it that all the time. I yeah. think there's like different nuances in the language so that it gets it like skirts away the liability from the manufacturers and puts it onto you. 
Yeah. Wow. It seems like there's two camps moving forward with cars. It's like the people that don't want to do shit and then people that <laughs> like want it to be more of a machine and have more feedback. And I think we're going to see more divergence as it goes on and things be like computers get better or whatever. It's interesting. It's a weird time to live in. It's a very weird time. The yeah. more I think about it, the more I like rewatch movies like Wally or all these things. And I'm like, are we, <laughs> are we just going to rely on technology to take care of us? Yeah. I, I just plug me in, dude. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just plug me. In. Well, I was thinking, cause we're going to have uh, a stunt driver on next week. Who's driven every car in every movie. He drove in fast and furious. He was the driver for Knight Rider. Whoa. Um, but I was asking him, we were just chatting on the phone and I was asking him like, um, car companies who make deals for movies to have product placement, like Audis, BMWs, they're always in all these movies. Mm -hmm. I was thinking back to minority report and they had a full like automated track. And I was like, what's the point of like having your brand in this type of movie where like no one actually drives the cars? True. I guess it, it shows that it's a forward thinking company in a way yeah i guess it does it fits with their design aesthetic because i remember the first time i watched irobot Mm -hmm. and that what did they have the r8 that was like the first prototype of the audi r8 that was shown i think and it blew my mind i was like oh my god really so for like the longest time ever i just would my brain would go audi r8 i want to see one i want to buy one i remember i just watched that i should remember it (laughs) uh he drives the mustang gt in like the opening scene i am legend I'm legend. That's yeah, what I'm thinking. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then he flips it over and then the zombies are all running for him. And then, yeah, you know. Yeah. And he's, then the whole thing with his dog in the bathtub. And he's boxing. Um, <sighs> oh, man, that's a sad movie. It is a very sad movie. Very sad ending. I was not expecting that ending. Yeah. Are we, okay, we're going off the rails. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's, it's I, I guess, to back to the the topic i do think all this tech is it's helpful i mean i can't tell you the amount of times i drive a lot between la and san diego to go see my family and being able to go 80 at least hold 80 yeah. on the fast lane is a game changer and when someone's blocking that lane at 50 55 because it's a family i'm like this is not the family lane um, yeah so yeah i'm all for it it's frustrating for sure and if it if there if it helps one percent of that be alleviated on the road then i'll I'm, take it i'm cool with it yeah so Porsche recently filed a patent for a six-stroke engine design. Whoa. Can you believe that, guys? Oh, we get two more strokes oh, in 2026. <laughs> <laughs> Most modern cars use the four-stroke intake, compression, ignition, exhaust, cycle. Suck, uh, squeeze, bang, blow, suck, as squeeze, we know it. Yeah, yeah. Suck, squeeze, bang, blow, dust it up, and off you go. Uh, that has my ex singing the hook on it. Oh, Kind of weird oh. to think about. I'll be damned. I was like, <laughs> all right. Say it sexier. <laughs> uh, Porsche's new six-stroke design adds in a second compression and ignition phase, which means two power strokes instead of one, which is crazy to think about. Because I, I was trying to like, when I just read the headline, I was like, there is like unburnt fuel after the first power stroke yeah. that just gets, you know, sent out. That's where you get the burbles. All right. So we've got intake, compression, mm-hmm. ignition, Compression, ignition, ignition exhaust. exhaust. So apparently the first power stroke is actually longer than the intake stroke, which exposes scavenging ports, oh. which allow more fresh air in. When these ports are exposed, an overhead exhaust valve is opened, and there's a rush of fresh air that comes in at the bottom of the cylinder, which allows for some exhaust gas to be pushed out of the overhead valve. It's interesting. It's got to be worth it for them to develop this. You know, like... What the it can't think, just be this, you can't spend millions of dollars on this novelty engine, like it's got to be make more power than a normal Porsche has engine. been doing things like this. They did the whole thing with the e fuel, which we've talked about, you know, the yes. synthesized gasoline that they're doing in Chile. I don't know that that is going to have mainstream adoption, but I think that them trying these things as a company is probably like there's probably going to be some element of this that gets worked into a car at some point, or maybe it's buying brand loyalty with people who are like, oh, Porsche is forward thinking. Maybe I'll buy their electric car as a result. Yeah. Because I I would imagine that with a normal four-stroke engine, as we talked about the burbles and everything, there is unspent exhaust that's that's being pushed out. And I would imagine unspent gas gas in the exhaust that's being expelled. And I would imagine this is just kind of optimizing that so that they don't have as much of that. I think it's super cool. I wonder, I think it would make sense if, uh, 
it was a shorter stroke. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not as much fuel as the first compression. Yeah, so that's what stroke. this said was that the first stroke is longer. Yeah, first stroke they is do, longer. So they do have, they have, yeah. have different second length one strokes. Is shorter. The second stroke is shorter. The second stroke is longer. Oh. Okay. Second. So that means that if the second stroke is longer, there's pro there's possibly more compression. Yeah. And, uh, can we get a sound clip of this thing? Like, yeah, do you know yeah. what this sounds like? I think they just announced it. What do you okay. think it sounds like, Joe? Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, probably. <laughs> what, how, what do you think it sounds like? <laughs> oh, like, like, yeah, like, 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 you get the like two strokes? <laughs> 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 I mean, I do think efficiency wise, this is a very bold move by Porsche. Yeah. I don't know. Like, like you said, it's going to cost them millions of dollars too. But they have to, I feel. Like Toyota did this. They went to a weird three-cylinder configuration to pump out more power and yeah. be more efficient. Yeah, it, it seems like Porsche is just really trying to optimize the internal combustion engine while sure. they still have it. And I think because we've seen adoption to electric cars is slow and they're having a hard time selling them. But also there's regulations that say we have to keep emissions low and we have to keep you know, reducing fleet overall emissions. So they are just trying to keep it alive as long as they can. Yeah. I wonder if this is a Band-Aid and, you know, we're still going to eventually, you know, transition fully to electric in a couple of years and this is all going to be for nothing. I don't know. I feel like it took more than like 130 years to get to this point with the gas engine and it's very good now. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like uh, they're just going to keep investing in it and making it better and better and better until the point where like it spits out water or <laughs> so, you know, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> yeah. uh, there's so much invested in gas engines that it doesn't make sense to go fully electric now. And at some point, and Porsche already announced they're going hybrid. Mm -hmm. So that's probably the future. Also, like, I don't know if batteries are ever going to be that light that they're going to be worth it to stuff a car full of batteries and make it 2,000 more pounds than it normally is. Yeah, that's very true. What about a 100-stroke engine? <laughs> <laughs> it's made by acme <laughs> uh, but i hear there's yeah. some other engine news swirling oh, around right do now you? well a few months ago we talked about toyota's engine technology partnership with mazda and subaru last week the plot thickened when lexus enthusiasts reported on a japanese language video from Karuma News, where a Toyota rep dropped a bombshell. Whoa. What do you think the bombshell what, is? It? You guys read the script. doesn't matter. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I, I heard that they're uh, bringing back the 1994 Supra. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they found a bunch of new dead stock. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the video, a Toyota engineer was showcasing an in-development two-liter turbo four-cylinder engine. And apparently the engineer tells Karuma News... Quote, Toyota has a globally popular engine called the 2JZ. We all knew that. Mm -hmm. I would like to aim for an engine that surpasses that. Wow. Big statement. What so, does that mean? Uh, mm -hmm. Like more globally <laughs> revered or more power. Mm. Mm. When I when I read that, I, I was like, okay, wait. What What is the 2JZ? Like what is, like what made it so? And I'm like, I know we did a, I rewatched our video on it. Can, it can like, be boosted. Can be well the you have an iron block which yeah. is incredibly robust. Yeah. Um I remember Job weighed his it was a crankshaft, was it, from his R B was like forty four something pounds, whereas the A eighty two J C motor was sixty pounds. So like everything's oh. beefier. Yeah. Um it's right. just the, the balance the, the of the way the, motor. the coolant ports allow it to take a lot more uh a lot more uh, abuse. I don't know, abuse inside um, the block. But yeah, it even even the head gasket comes reinforced from the factory. Um, the firing order of the cylinders makes it like super balanced. So yeah. I think it's an all-star engine. It does almost like everything right. Yeah, it was it was famously over-engineered, which is yeah. why it's so good. Same with the RB. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they're going after tuners, and it's already kind of set up for hybrid electrification as well. So maybe this is like the 2J that you can boost with electric stuff. Ooh, that's exciting. Because yeah. also I was like, well, what about the B58? Um, how? Yeah. yeah, I mean, that is the successor to the 2J. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's already been praised. I guess it's not as, you know, famous as the 2J yet. Um, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, I think that only thing with the B58 is people are like, 
It's not, you know, it's BMW engineered. It's not Toyota. That is true. So Toyota's working on this. They're working on two other engines that are going to be powering into vehicles in the future. That's interesting. Again, like Porsche developing more internal combustion engines. Toyota's doing the same thing. Yeah. I think it means they're really not giving up on it for a while and they don't expect it to go away. And they've, Toyota's been adamant about that for a long time now. They said they're never going to go fully electric. It doesn't make that much sense. And now they're kind of right. I think their only electric car is with the BZ4X. Yeah, which has mistaken. been panned by critics. That and the Subaru Solterra, I think, uh-huh. is the same car. Yeah, People don't like those. And the range is not good. And it's just it looks like a plastic. True. And then you have wow. the other flip side of the coin, which is them being ingenious, I think, innovative with the GR Corolla. The GR yeah. Yaris with the little three-cylinder turbo. Except that engine has started on fire a lot. Uh, <laughs> vo- like... You do so many things that void the warranty. Mm. Uh, like driving over 80 voids the warranty. Isn't that... Oh, I might have read something about that. Like some guy got invited to the actual... I guess you purchase a car, you get invited to a Toyota track day. And on the way to the track day, he went over 80 and started dripping oil and the oil caught on fire. Whoa. His what? his car got burnt down and then he couldn't... It was like brand new, but he couldn't get a new one because... Technically, he drove over 80, which voids the warranty. That is so unfair. Yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah. Super lame. So, and people, you know, like the new turbos on Toyotas are not reliable, I guess. Hmm. That's what's been going Hmm. around. I don't know. I can't afford a new car. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, same. (laughs) Well, then I guess like my only thing is then you look at, again, Koenigsegg with, is it the Jesco or like one of their, yeah, that has a three cylinder, is it? It's turbo as well, right? Well, and that's ancillary, I think, too, like hybrid mm-hmm. power. But how do they get it right? I'm assuming maybe it's they develop everything, yeah. and I don't know something about like their um, rack shield, radial axial. Um, it's like a disc uh, electric motor. Okay, it's like this big, super light. Uh, I think it's like over 300 horsepower, and then they have like four of those or three or four of those in a car. Well, the thing with a, like a Koenigsegg engine is that it will get maintained very regularly yeah, that is every true. couple thousand miles because you're true. not driving too. But well, those have also had failures. They've caught on fire. Yeah, they caught on fire too. Right. And then, <laughs> and then, but then Koenigsegg was like, bring them all back. Like they're immediately like, stop driving yours if you own one. Interesting. We're going to send out texts to like inspect everyone's Jesco. I would hope they did that if you spend $2 million on a car. Yeah. Well, I mean, it wasn't like... Rolls Royce or Bentley had that service. They were like, if you buy one of our cars, doesn't matter where you are in the world. If it breaks down, we're going to send a tech to come fix it. Cool. Yeah. I don't know if they still do that, but that was a cool service. That's wild. Mm -hmm. But I mean, back to the thing, I wonder if Toyota went three cylinders. It's not the move. We'll add one more cylinder. And now we have this brand new motor that they're trying to do. Yeah. The three (laughs) JZ. (laughs) Yeah. You like the 2JZ? <laughs> How about the 3JZ? <laughs> uh, tell us about the specs of this engine, Joe. So like Max said, the 2-liter turbo is just one of three engines Toyota is currently working on to power all of its future vehicles. The others are 1.5-liter NA, and also they make a turbo version of that. The 2-liter is the most promising, though, and it stands to be Toyota's flagship performance engine. Base power of this 2-liter is expected to be around 400 horsepower. Not bad. Which, that's awesome. What does the GR Corolla make with three cylinders? 300. So, yeah, it makes sense. 100 per. Yeah. yeah. 100 <laughs> per cylinder is pretty good. It's crazy. <laughs> <From> that <laughs> tiny little thing, yeah. Yeah. I, wa- I wonder, so there was, like, um, news about this tiny little roadster they were making. It's probably only going to be in Japan, but. Oh, the Miata Killer. The Miata Killer. Oh. Is that a K car? Is that the one that you guys were talking about? Um, they didn't talk about engine specs in it, but it'd be sick if it had this engine in it, like a little Miata it's with like 400 horsepower. It's like this little dinkster convertible. A little dinkster. You know? Dinkster. That's cool. You you and your dinky friend can sit in it. <laughs> Put your, uh, dipping your dots toes. in the front. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I think the real question that I have yeah. is what if I'm an insanely wealthy person who thinks the apocalypse is right around the corner and I'm looking for a vehicle to uh, to survive that? Well, that's a very specific question. You have 
You're in luck, though, because this Florida-based tuning company makes the craziest Land Rover that I've ever seen. I don't Whoa. know if you guys Florida? ever seen I have, Well, I saw a crazy Land Rover at Car Week. There was that, that custom one that had the LS in the back that Nolan took all those pictures of. The one that, that was based on a Land Rover? Mm-hmm. Based on a Defender. The Scrimbo? The Scrimbo. Scrimbo. That's right. Is it called a Scrimbo? Something like that. Scarbo. That's the one. Scarbo. Scarbo. Well, this ain't your grandpa's Scarbo. <laughs> this bonkers <laughs> Land Rover 6x6 six <sighs> has... Uh, it's two feet wider than a normal Defender. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Very on brand cool. for Florida. Yeah. It's got a crazy orange uh, bull bar with points on the top. <laughs> uh, it looks like the 6x6 six six G-Wagon. Yeah. Okay, it so does. it's a 6x6. Six six. It's got six wheels. It's two feet wider than a regular Defender. Six powered wheels, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's based on a Land Rover Defender, fully customized suspension, <laughs> Big old 38-inch tires, and like I said, it's two feet wider than a standard Defender. It adds a pickup bed to the back while retaining all three rows of seating. That's so this cool. thing's like 75 feet long. <laughs> and it's got the, we were talking about putting a cow catcher on the front of your yeah, car earlier. Yeah, this thing actually has a cow killer. Oh, <laughs> cool. <laughs> this is for guys who eat raw meat, man. Yeah, this is for this is for guys who run out of regular meat and they start eating horse meat. Because <laughs> they're so into meat. So, <laughs> if that paints yeah. a picture for six wheels, do we think in the apocalypse that more wheels is the solution? Because I think, I think you would just want a motorcycle. Personally, I I'm not agree. I've more. said this forever. I want the Husqvarna four hundred one, uh, or maybe bike. the seven hundred one Svartpilen. <laughs> I'm getting out of town on a smart villain. You said it once, he'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, so it's six. What's the weight of this thing? Because it has 518 horsepower. That's not that much for a supercharged V8. The Toyota four cylinders making 400. So. I mean, this is all torque yeah. probably. This is torquey, turkey boy. It is it's so a, a Land Rover. It's a Land Rover V8 though. So you're getting like 200 miles out of town and then you're, you're breaking down. Mm -hmm. So this six by six beast is called the Apocalypse World Ender. Oh. Original. <laughs> uh, so this is gonna bring upon it's the called the Earth fucker. Yeah, this is, <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna bring upon the apocalypse, and then it's gonna be driving after the apocalypse. Uh huh. Is what their marketing scheme is. I bet it I will be. Yeah, um, I mean, but I think this is like a big segment nowadays in the market for. People who have nothing better to spend their money on. We saw it with Resvani. This I was going to say this looks exactly like a Resvani. Yeah. Uh, if you don't know Resvani, they make Apocalypse SCVs that are super plush on in the interior, but they're also bulletproof. Mm -hmm. I think and they have, maybe had yeah, one. They're Jeeps I mean, with body kits. They're bulletproof. And they have some like old. safety stuff where they like they spray smoke if you want to get away. Pepper right. The door handles, door. Yeah, you, yeah, door handles uh -huh. will shock you. Yeah. Door handles will shock you. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's, I, I don't know what to say. I guess it, this is just like not my world. I never wake up yeah. going like, man, I might need this thing. It just seems like uh, part of SEMA that like, it's just, it seems like a SEMA car, you know? Uh-huh. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's an exercise in some frivolity. Yeah. It is. I mean, it's it's a status symbol, I guess. Look, all I'm saying is when those bombs drop <laughs> and we're trying to get away, the hogs will be out to play, not the six-wheelers. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I am I was thinking about EMPs the other day. Like, Oh, yeah. That's going to be the first thing that happens before the bombs They're going to wipe out our grid. Yeah. Wipe out the grid. And, and also, this thing has, like, you know, flat screens in the back. Everything is electronic. Couldn't get in the car if it wasn't if there was no power. Problem. Yeah, that's why I, I take my carbureted Cuda. You get my Kickstart Honda. Yeah, my carbureted <laughs> Cuda. <laughs> We're gonna all be installing those crank starts on all of our muscle cars. <laughs> I also think if we live in LA, we're absolutely. Oh, for sure. Just trying yeah, to get out. Yeah, it's gonna be. I think I think about that constantly. I don't know why. I'm like, man, if shit hits a fan, how do I get it out of here? There's no way. Maybe. You could have a monster truck that drives over I all think the a other dirt cars. Bike. I think you get dirt a dirt bike. bike, you go up to Mount Chiliad, you uh, <laughs> you hole up for a couple of weeks there, <laughs> and then you make your way across the mountain, you go through Palmdale, and you go uh, you go east. 
Yeah, but then you're like going through the desert for days. Mm -hmm. On the bike. There was, I saw an interesting TikTok of a guy that was showing you a shortcut. Because I guess there's a lot of traffic going from, did I know, you see that? Yeah, I know which one you're talking about. Going from about. LA yeah. to Las Vegas, there's a ton of traffic at a certain point. And he just drove off oh, the highway. Oh, he goes and takes the truck route. route. Yeah, I want to do that for a video. I was like getting to, <laughs> getting to Las Vegas the apocalyptic way, mm -hmm. or whatever. Anything and we just take roads. one of these um, Earth destroyers. <laughs> I can't think of anything more embarrassing than trying to take a shortcut off the freeway and getting stuck. <laughs> that was another TikTok I saw. This Jeep that got really angry drove off, and they hit an electrical wire oh. and just got stuck. Oh like, my guys. <laughs> But we wouldn't expect any of these cars to actually go off-road, which brings us to our final story of the week. Unless you've been living under a rock, you know the average truck price has been soaring lately. It's currently over $60,000, more than $10,000 higher than the average vehicle sales price. So to give you an example of what's going on, Ford recently unveiled a new Platinum Plus trim for its line of Super Duty trucks. Cool, what's that got? Ford is advertising it as having features like heated and ventilated Venetian leather seats. Whoa. Venetian leather. With French stitching. Whoa. So that's two different European countries. That's right. You've got Venice. You've got France. Yeah. You got <laughs> you to send your seats to, to France to get stitched, and then they send them to Italy to get ventilated, which but is so inefficient. That Venetian think, yeah, air flowing through up into your thighs. Yeah. I will say, I would not buy a new truck if it didn't have ventilated seats. No. I think... Every time we get a presser car, I'm like, oh, I love that fresh air blowing up my derriere. It is great. It is great. But I mean, this is, at least I feel here because I hear you guys. You get in a GMC or something like nicer premium tr trim. Yeah. It's like, oh, this is, it's a couch, dude. It's, it's you're just couch. cruising on the freeway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you're not really, are you really doing like pickup truck stuff? No. With it? So I guess that's the <sighs> no. thing. I, I guess yeah. more people like them because they're comfortable and just they're big. big. They're safe. Yeah. They're big. They're comfy. What I think is the coolest innovation in these this like new truck segment is the lay flat seats that Ford invented. So you can like Ooh. you're on the you're on the job, you're pulling ten hours at the construction site. You don't want to drive two hours home. You just put your lay flat seats, you sleep overnight at the site. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. You just can sleep right there. You never have to go home the just old keep working. chain. It is cool tech though. Have you ever seen them work? I, I don't think I have. So they normal seat will go maybe i don't know 160 degrees if you want that's an obtuse angle <laughs> yeah but then you still have like a bump in the middle yeah, always this one so it goes fully flat and then the bump goes up to meet it and it's oh like so it's actually actually flat. flat interesting which i think is pretty cool that's I, mean, I think ford is doing that good on you Ford. my honda fit does that really the whole everything like lays down perfectly so that the whole car is flat hmm. What? It's like one of the selling points for the car. It's wild. Um, I would have never thought. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, you guys can sleep over whenever you want. Wow. Cool. Uh, have you ever slept in your fit? I have, but not with the whole thing laid out. I was just on a, some road trip and I was so tired. I was like, whatever, side of yeah. the road. Yeah. That's H Have you slept in your car? Uh, I slept in one of my cars, not my current car. Okay. I w oh, last one I slept in was a 2007 Trailblazer. And it was honestly the best. Hmm. night of sleep i've had in <laughs> one, 10, 10 15 years whoa <laughs> yeah. yeah it was great it was at a wedding and i was <laughs> i was uh everyone in it was at a camp at the base of mount st helens and everyone in my bunk was like man you were really snoring last night I was like, <laughs> but i know that i'm snoring i can't have a good night's sleep because yeah. i'm like i don't want to sleep and wake everyone up so i went and slept in the truck and i was Dude, i feel you on that one I feel you on that one. The snoring. I've been told, Phil, shut up. And I'm like, I don't what am know, I supposed dude. to do? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do everything humanly possible to not snore. I breathe do. Breathe right strips. Breathe right strip. I do the flow. You do the mouth tape? What? You do the mouth tape? I did the mouth tape, but I was freaking out. I would like freak out and, you know, have apnea or whatever because <laughs> I was not breathing. Choking. Yeah. Um, enough about that. <laughs> enough about my <laughs> severe health problems. <laughs> So prices for this Ford aren't available yet, but Ford's current top trim F-250 Super Duty truck, the Limited, starts at $98,000. Ooh, what? Those will probably be about a buck ten. Yeah, that's a that's an expensive Six truck. Six-figure truck, dude. Oh, my God. That's badass. But Ford isn't alone in this either. Chevy and Dodge both offer ultra-premium luxury packages for their trucks, 
like Dodge Rams 1500 tungsten crew cab, which starts at over $87,000. That's outrageous. For That's the, too much. I mean, the average price would be $60,000 for yeah. a truck. Do you want to put a bunch of manure in your $90,000 truck? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't even want to handle manure. Why, <laughs> why do I have so much manure? Well, then you shouldn't have had a baby, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. Nothing shocks me anymore. Trucks are expensive. Ugh, yeah. I guess. I got, an, I got a flyer in my mailbox the other day that said a house in Glacelle Park sold that was listed at uh, $900,000 for a 1,200-square-foot yeah. house. And it sold for a quarter million above. Yeah. And they sent that to me what? being like, hey, isn't that cool? <laughs> <laughs> That's an entire Bentley more than this house. And this is like a, this is like a starter home. Yeah. Yeah. 1,200 square feet. Was it two bedroom? Yeah. It's got and a little are, yard. I'm assuming these trucks are just being sold in America, right? Because I look at Toyota and Toyota's releasing the baby Hilux to I the saw, rest yeah. of the world. I saw a, a decent amount of Dodges in, in Germany, interestingly. Mm -hmm that were used as work trucks. Interesting. I saw a picture of a Dodge parked in like Amsterdam and it was sticking out three feet past yeah. the other cars. <laughs> I was like, this is dumb. You look at the hood lines as well on Rams and it's chest high on me. Yes. And then you look at like the statistics of like <laughs> vehicular homicides and oh. Ram is up there, and there's got to be a correlation. Me at all. There is. I think there has been. I, I read it somewhere. There's a study because same with the Tundra, the, where like they just keep getting taller. Yeah. Unnecessarily. Right. It's mostly for looks. Well, have yeah. you seen the new Absolutely. mail trucks? They've yeah. got the smallest oh. hood I've ever seen. Oh, they look goofy. Yeah. Yeah, they look like the scientists from the Nightmare After. Christmas. I like. I like them. I know that people are like those are the stupidest looking vehicles I've ever seen in my life. But I would love to review the new mail truck if there's any uh postal workers that are listening to this podcast and Wait, they have the new mail truck i don't think the postal work worker would be like <laughs> yeah let me stop my shift and drive over donut hey i'll I do a we ride gotta along up, i'll we gotta whatever up, uh we gotta have to hit up oshkosh defense oshkosh defense. oshkosh uh, is this who made the the new the new, the new hybrid mm -hmm. yeah mm. we did a wheelhouse three years ago i looked it up uh because it also has I, I, we're doing a, a pass gas on Grumman LLVs. Oh, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, but I was like, I was like, I know that we did a wheelhouse on it. And mm -hmm. there were three different designs that were in the final running. One of them was called a workhorse. And that company actually went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. It was going to be fully EV. But all three of them looked exactly the same. That, that weird eight foot tall windshield. And the hood that is like, you could you could uh, grind the top of it. Cool. Yeah. Well, you don't need me to get started on the Grumman LLV, but I will say that I <laughs> this think this guy talks for hours I every think day. My on the Grumman LLV. Local postal worker will be ecstatic about the new vehicles because yeah, AC. Don't, they don't have AC in those. They have a three hundred and sixty cam. They have a uh, cargo space that you can stand fully upright in it. Game changer. Um, oh yeah. I just saw it. Like people. Postal workers die every year because of overheating. I had no oh, idea dude. they had no AC in those things. No those cars are like that's brutal. 35 years old. They're Jeep DJs. They're based on a Jeep, Jeep. DJ. It's an Iron Duke four cylinder, which is like a, a bad four cylinder the, from the 70s. What's the um, Unbelievable. Fiero? It's a Fiero engine. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh my God. They are prone to catching on fire because they put the fuse box below the, uh, the, the washer fluid reservoir. And so it would drip down and they'd catch on fire. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. Now we see there's a little fan in it though. So that's all I get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yikes. Well, Basically yeah. the opposite of premium luxury trucks is what I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we really went out. On yeah. That. <laughs> that's what you guys want. That's what you want to go back to. The Grumman LLV. I we certainly want don't. French leather. Yeah, we I want Venetian air. Honestly, I'd be fine if I never got mail in my mailbox ever again. All I do is walk from my mailbox to the recycling bin, toss all that shit away. It's just free trash. Yeah. It's literally all it is. Yeah. These are tr um, men dying in these vehicles delivering free trash to your house. Oh, I, dude. <laughs> this the way that you put it like that, <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Um, but I was going to say, back on, on the truck thing, like I want, I really do want to hear your guys' like, opinion because I do think this is, once these trends start, you know, we, we're like, it's fine, trucks are cool, whatever. Yeah. But I think there's, I mean, at least listeners-wise, if you guys have an opinion on this, but I don't, 
I would much prefer like a smaller truck that is cheap. Like I'm super excited yeah. for the Junior Hilux. I've been trying to get one, but I'm like, how? I don't like the trend of super premium trucks. No. I think it's they're cool, they're nice, but we don't need every truck to. Yeah, I think it's the same thing as when they keep building these stupid cubic looking luxury condos in every single neighborhood. Yeah. Every time they tore down a local donut shop, you know. True. It's just those uh, are those are like the opposite for me though, because the people that are buying these trucks are buying the one million dollar house that you're talking about. Mm. The people that buy Ford F one fifty base trim are the one that are buying the three hundred thousand dollar condos because that's all we can afford in LA. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And those are the people that are actually using them to work. I just don't think any of these trucks are going to end up being good financial investments. It's just kind of like they got the money now they can spend it, but that's going to disappear. Like there's no way yeah. one of these hundred thousand dollar trucks is going to be worth more than like within 30 grand. five years. It's going to drop forty thousand dollars in value. It's oh, just 100%. a bad investment. I wonder if this is like a you know I when I learned about the whole you can write off a G wagon because of the weight and blah blah blah. Yeah, they're actually I wonder not trucks, doing that anymore oh. in LA at least. Mm. They closed that loophole. Mm. Yeah, they pivoted to trucks. Uh, so yeah, just to wrap things up, are we? gonna pool our funds together and buy one of these trucks or well, no a little homie timeshare on a hundred thousand dollar truck <laughs> yeah. i would much rather get that new usps little truck oh yeah i'll go in on that with you boys. yeah give All us day. more mail trucks that's what we want give us ultra luxury mail trucks we're we gonna have. be the first people to slam a new mail truck right on its nuts it would look cool slammed yeah it would, it would look that sick. hood would be an inch off the ground that'd be sick chop the top too <laughs> Ooh. <Chop> the top. <laughs> 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 if, there's any re if there's any render artist listening yeah. to this i'd love to see one yeah. of those new mail trucks just chopped and, channeled and slammed on his nuts yeah let us know brad designs, mm -hmm. brad designs. <laughs> <laughs> all right that does it for our show this week uh thanks for watching please like and subscribe because we want to grow and do more cool stuff please follow our dude phil armenta and max maddox and i'm joe weber uh thanks for watching we'll see you next week bye, bye. bye.